You're listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, hosted by Aaron Walker and Heather Dyer. Tune in weekly to get inspired and make good food. Monday uh, recordings are fun. Okay, welcome everyone. Here we are again, Three Kitchens Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode. I am your host, Heather Dyer, and I'm here with my co-host, Erin Walker. Hello. She's waving. Hello. I'm waving because that's what I do. I go for all the visuals when I'm doing an audio podcast. <laughs> One of these days, we'll oh. video record and then we can wave all we want. And right? Fix my hair 17 times, which is what I do constantly <laughs> during every recording. So, Erin, mm-hmm. thinking about what kind of recipe should we do next? We are constantly thinking like six recipes ahead. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I've got, a, well, you probably have a list. I have a Pinterest board. You don't. Is it all in your head? I think it all floats around up in the cloud. <laughs> the cloud that is your brain? The cloud that is my brain. <laughs> the scary well, place. Well, I have a Pinterest board. Yeah, very creatively called podcast ideas. And it goes, <laughs> I never delete anything out of it. So I'll like pin a bunch of stuff. And then when I actually go, I'm like, just now I'm like, okay, where's that recipe? Scroll, 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 scroll. <laughs> Cause it's already like months ago that I was thinking about doing it. And that is a bun mei sandwich, which is a Vietnamese sub. We, we usually call that around here, a Vietnamese mm-hmm. sub. And I decided to finally do it because one day Recently, I was at the store and the pork tenderloin was on sale and I got a big package of it. Ooh, really nice. nice looking pork tenderloin. And so I split them out, mm-hmm. put them in my freezer and I'm like, oh, what am I going to do with this? Vietnamese subs because we love them. Why wouldn't we want to make them? You love them. Have you not eaten one? Is this what you're about to tell me? I have eaten them before and they always have a very large amount <laughs> cilantro of cilantro on them i will not put cilantro on your vietnamese sub okay i promise then i'll eat it because anytime i've had it it has been spoiled by the presence of cilantro because as you know when you go to eat out it's not like they're changing their gloves when they touch the cilantro and touch your i see i'm very anti-cilantro I just, yes. I can't even walk by it in the grocery store and smell it, or I'm like, <laughs> oh, a gag. I can't take the smell, the taste. It's all just all bad for me. So I'm looking forward to trying this then and not being turned off. <laughs> okay, so the, so the way I'll do it is make yours first. The cilantro will not even come out of the fridge, will not be what? anywhere near it. Okay. Package it all up. Here's my rider. <laughs> if I'm gonna eat your sub, here's okay, what princess. you princess. <laughs> no, it's Ooh. totally understandable. Put your tiara on. Excellent. And okay. I will cater to your severe dislike of cilantro. Anyone else listening who hates cilantro, you can also just leave it out. It's totally okay. fine. All right. So I believe there are. I mean, I've had bon mei with chicken, beef, pork. I think there's even a cold cuts version that we've had. Um, this one, I'm going to I'm gonna go with the pork because I found the pork. But I think you could probably adjust this. Maybe you've got some chicken breast in your, or chicken thigh would probably be good, right? Oh, yeah. Just um, adjust it if you prefer that. But we're going with the pork, which, and I have no idea if this is like the traditional one or whatever. Not worrying about that. Okay. You have a toasty, crusty baguette. Okay. A whole bunch of stuff in there like chili mayo, marinated pork, pickled vegetables, fresh cucumbers, jalapenos, and typically cilantro, but in this case you will not have that. So it's fresh veggies, marinated grilled pork, all piled into a big crusty baguette. Does that sound good? I like this now. Now I see why people (laughs) want to eat this. (laughs) Yeah, without the thing you don't like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see what goes in the marinade. Shallots, lemongrass, fish sauce, oyster Mm. sauce, lime juice, maple syrup, brown sugar, fresh ginger, garlic, 
sesame oil, an Asian chili sauce, like sriracha or something similar, mm. and Chinese five spice and ground coriander. Ooh. This all sounds good, right? Were we just talking about how much we love grinding the coriander? Oh, I love it. It's my favorite. The smell of it when you fresh, <sighs> fresh grind it up. Oh, and they got and it's like it. satisfying because they got those yes. little round pods and you just pop them and then Crush the them? smell. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's what are what is that called? ASMR. It's a whole experience. I could just watch people do it and still enjoy it. <laughs> oh, what does that stand for? Yes, ASMR autonomous sensory meridian response oh yeah it, it's a tingling sensation that usually begins on the scalp and moves down the back of the neck and upper spine it's a pleasant <laughs> response a low-grade euphoria positive oh. feelings triggered by auditory or visual stimuli oh interesting everybody's People. got asmr just from listening to our podcast that's right <laughs> don't you do you feel the tingles <laughs> is it the tingles or is it just the growling stomach because that's what i'm <laughs> is that, that an too. asmr response yeah i think it is there's also a pickled vegetable in here the pickled vegetables yeah are matchstick carrots and daikon cut into match <sighs> sticks or you could sub radishes if you can't find a daikon Ooh. i believe a daikon is a form of radish isn't it <laughs> It is. Yeah. We were at the grocery store, my grandmother and I, and uh, the lady was picking out a daikon and then like, I think she must have picked the one at the bottom because like two more rolled off on the floor. <laughs> it just made me laugh that these vegetables started rolling off. It was like juggling, shelf. <laughs> juggling the daikon radishes. All of a sudden, thum, thum, thum. <laughs> <laughs> big radishes falling on the floor and then you're like guiltily picking them up and putting them back on the shelf. Like, no, I did not just away. pick the bottom of the pyramid and make it all fall down. It wasn't me. <sighs> so you have your matchstick carrots and daikon, and you're going to marinate it with rice vinegar, water, sugar, and salt. Very basic little pickle. Yes, you mm -hmm. are. That sounds great. And then you're going to make a the chili garlic mayo, which is a mayo and a some type of chili sauce like sriracha. And, and that's it. It's basically a nice big toasty sandwich with fresh fresh vegetables a little pickle who doesn't love a good sandwich and this yeah. has got some new fun flavors that we don't always have in our sandwiches i love the idea of this pickled radish carrot deal Ooh, yes. i love something pickled on a sandwich right not just a dill pick like i like a dill pickle that's good mm -hmm. But sometimes like a pickled onion, like those quick pickled onions that you made. I just made those again for taco night. I make those all the time too. They're so good. They are one of the staples in my fridge. And that's like a red wine or red raspberry vinegar. You can use red wine vinegar, or if you find the red wine raspberry vinegar, mm. it just makes it that much better. Yeah. Uh, sugar, salt, and onions and it takes 30 minutes on your counter and you can serve oh my it God, and make it so good and if you make a little extra they can sit in your fridge and then you can go to your fridge with a fork and just <laughs> scoop them out and eat them oh they're so yeah. good like i'm not a big fan of a raw onion no in, on anything i don't like an onion on a burger or like on my sandwich but if you pickle it it's just that little extra it softens the flavor of the onion and makes it sweeter and then suddenly it's delicious and i want it on everything it's because we love vinegary stuff we do <laughs> that's true we love vinegar so much we drink it <laughs> <laughs> literally <So>. literally <laughs> it's called a shrub if you're it's, unfamiliar so yeah. drinking vinegar called a shrub we're not just drinking it out of the bottle made for drinking we're not yeah. just <laughs> sitting there with the apple cider vinegar Ooh, one for you one for me <laughs> <laughs> some people say you should <laughs> they do some people say it's healthy i don't know i tried it once i took like a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and just about died <laughs> it's so horrible and yet i will mix that with fruit oh but yeah it in my fridge for four days and then i want to drink it so i don't yeah. know it's a weird it's a weird thing yeah i'm sure it's science i can't tell you what the science is but it's the science of i like it <laughs> <laughs> a lot of food science is just 
somehow it tastes somebody tried it it worked it tasted good let's just make it and not question why it works. i'm pretty <laughs> sure a lot of food science is i got lazy and forgot about this <laughs> or <laughs> oops that went wrong oops. but it turned out great yeah 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 all right so stay tuned this is not this is one of those super easy kind of recipes we're making a sandwich taking the time to make a good sandwich that is mm-hmm. That is an art. This will just take a little forethought. You can plan it for, you know, tomorrow's lunch. Do it. Mm, can't wait. Hi, listener. If you love sandwiches as much as we love sandwiches, we've got some other episodes for you to listen to. Go to threekitchenspodcast.com to the episodes page and type sandwich in the search bar. You'll see a Middle Eastern sandwich with eggplant and spicy mango sauce and all kinds of good stuff in it. You'll find a Korean fried chicken and bacon jam sandwich that is to die for. Or how about a roti john sandwich, which is an omelet sandwich popular in Singapore and Malaysia. These are all fantastic. And as you're scrolling, you'll even find sandwich cookies if sweet is more your thing. Enjoy them all. And now, back to the show. All right, well... Let's then talk about banh mi sandwiches um, so you can get back to the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Okay, hurry up. I need to get back into my... <laughs> hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up get... and get going. Yeah. All right. So I bought a big package when it was on sale. And there were like four tenderloins oh, in it. Oh, nice. Out into the freezer. And so I don't remember exactly, but you want a decent size piece. Do the tenderloins of a pork really vary that much in size? They always seem pretty consistent to me, so. Yeah, I think so. They look (laughs) roughly the same size. I don't know. I didn't weigh it. I would say, yeah. Um, And what you're going to do first is let's start with the marinade and get it ready to go for the meat. So we've got two shallots peeled and just chopped, rough chopped, or a small, I think a small white onion is probably going to work too. Go with what you got, I always say. Mm -hmm. quarter cup of lemongrass from you know the white inner parts of the lemongrass Mm. yes I just used four stalks because one of them was a little skinny I used like four stalks I didn't really measure it out just kind of chop them in small enough pieces that they'll fit into your blender because you're going to blend all this oh okay that makes sense and I used my ninja I used the big taller cup of my ninja blender so I just made sure that I could toss all those into there a third a cup of fish sauce three tablespoons of oyster sauce three tablespoons of lime juice Mm -hmm. and three tablespoons of maple syrup two tablespoons of brown sugar five cloves of garlic peeled just toss them in there Mm -hmm. tablespoon of sesame oil tablespoon of vegetable or canola oil i think i actually used olive because that's what i had as olive oil a tablespoon of a chili sauce like sriracha, which is what mm-hmm. I used. Teaspoon each of coriander and Chinese five spice. You know, I ground my coriander with my mortar and pestle and I didn't That's even right. measure it. I'm like a teaspoon? Sure. <laughs> Looks good. I love that stuff. So I just toss it in there. Oh, yeah. And then it has ginger, fresh ginger. So mm. it says here in the recipe, one inch ginger peeled. Yeah. How do you feel about the way that ginger is listed in recipes like this? I feel like that's more specific than the thumb of ginger oh, that that's I'm worse. usually right. getting. <laughs> You're right. That is worse. Because I'm like, well, my thumb or like someone else's thumb? Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if my ginger root is bigger around and it doesn't like... Or I... does like a thumb mean like an entire branch? Is that like a name that we oh, just don't oh, commonly shit. know? Like, well, ginger kind of looks like fingers. Am I supposed to take like one of them? I, but what yeah. if it's a big knob as opposed to a little one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? When it goes to measuring it, I yes. tend to just go with the... Eh, that looks good. <laughs> See, I would have preferred if it was like a certain number of tablespoons of minced or grated ginger right so here i am i'm like one inch of ginger sure well it would also be easy to weigh it (laughs) yes that's true right i mean a lot of us if we're cooking we've got scales in our kitchen let's start a i have the beef with the ginger too heather i know i was like because i because (laughs) in the end i'm only saying this now because in the end i felt like it was a little heavy on the ginger and i think when i post this recipe i will adjust it Mm -hmm. to a better like a better measurement i'm gonna write a better measurement in our recipe everybody so if (sighs) if you're thinking i'm gonna write an inch or a thumb forget it even though i like fresh ginger i felt it was a little heavy and i think my one inch was a bit too much right 
So there you're going to just whiz that up in your food processor. It doesn't need to be, or your blender. It doesn't need to be like super fine. Okay. You're just, this is your marinade and you're going to be taking your meat back out of it. Okay. Okay. The pork, before you put it in the marinade, you're not just putting a chunk of tenderloin in the marinade. You're slicing it. So your tenderloin is kind of long, cut it in yeah. half in the middle in the okay. plate, then slice it into long pieces. So slice it lengthwise. Oh. Right? okay into thin strips and it okay. might help to have it a little bit frozen when you cut that just depending how good you are and how sharp your knife is that you know i find that's a really easy way to handle cutting meat is having it like partially frozen yeah like even if you put it in for an hour and just firm it up a little bit yeah so cut it as thin kind of as you can and then the thicker ones put it under a piece of plastic or whatever you do and pound it down a little bit if they're some pieces are a little bit thicker uh, okay you want them thin in your sandwich okay. okay that's before you put it in the marinade but put that into like a dish okay. cover it up pop it in your fridge you're going to cook it tomorrow same thing with the pickled vegetables so you've got oh yeah um approximately a cup of matchstick carrots and a cup of matchstick cut daikon or <laughs> regular radishes which is what i ended up having to use because the daikon at my grocery store felt so soft. I was like, oh, it's oh. not crunchy. Like, this is not going to be a nice pickle. And so big that I was like, well, then what am I going to do with this huge, soft <laughs> radish? <laughs> <Like it's... laughs> I just grabbed a bunch of nice red radishes. Hey, that works. Yeah. And you do a half cup rice vinegar, half cup water, two tablespoons of sugar, and a teaspoon of salt pretty basic quick pickle heat the liquid and the sugar and salt on the stove in a little pot so that you dissolve all that sugar okay yeah and then pour it over your vegetables cover it up put that in the fridge too so that's good for the next day then when you're going to make your sandwiches you need the bread that you're going to make your sandwich out of so i had french baguette a little too hard to eat in my opinion but I mean that's what was recommended I think I'd look for a different type of bun maybe yeah I was wondering if like a sub bun would have been better because yeah biting through that bun um, was a little too was effort <laughs> I know yeah an English cucumber thinly sliced lengthwise I use um... a vegetable peeler and just peel it into strips four to six jalapenos thinly sliced leave the seeds I'd say. Did you put a jalapeno in there? Yes. Oh, didn't even notice them. Maybe you need more. <laughs> Honestly, usually jalapenos I don't like, oh. but I didn't even notice really. I was like, oh, this has a little bit of spice in the marinade maybe. Oh, interesting. It totally hid in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I left the seeds. So you might've had a little heat from the seeds. Yeah. Oh, yum. Then of course, Fresh cilantro, if you like it. Erin did not have any cilantro touching her sandwich or anywhere near it. That's right. <laughs> and then this recipe has something called Maggie seasoning. Oh. Which it told me how to make it, so I just made it. Oh, Where no way. It? Okay. I want to know. I want to get into this. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing. It's hardly anything. I was like, oh, no. What's Maggie sauce? What is this? It's two tablespoons of soy sauce two tablespoons of fish sauce okay and two teaspoons of worcestershire sauce and half a teaspoon of sugar okay and you're just mixing that all together and you sort of drizzle it on each sandwich i see the maggie sauce all the time at oh, superstore a little asian yeah. on the worst because there's worcestershire in it right but it's got soy and fish sauces yeah. too very interesting maggie yeah. sauce can be made at home ha <laughs> I was like, oh, what's this going to taste like? And I taste mm. it. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this is not like something you want a lot of, I don't think. It's very bold flavor. And then make a little sriracha mayo, just mayo, mm. put some sriracha in there, mix it in. And then you're, you have to grill your pork. So now it's the next day you've marinated it. You take it out of the marinade and put it right on a hot grill, mm, okay. barbecue or a grill pan inside. And it's going to cook super fast because it's so thin. Mm -hmm. So like a minute or two per side, just grill it, flip it, grill it, take it off super quick. Okay. And then you're ready to make your sandwiches. So you'd put your sriracha mayo, pork, your cucumbers and jalapenos, your pickles mm. that you made, 
cilantro if you're doing that pile it all on there drizzle, drizzle some maggie i actually thought the maggie sauce was easier if i kind of put it onto the bread mm. kind of a messy big sandwich i did foil and a piece of parchment on it put the sandwich on wrapped it up so we could eat it a little bit later yeah and that's it it's a sandwich so i really liked how that meat turned out because it was um it wasn't chewy mm -hmm. the marinade and maybe the way that you cut it because i've never cut it lengthwise like that on a tenderloin usually it's little slices yeah and that seems to be a game changer in my opinion because it maybe i gotta try that out next time because i've never done that before that's really cool and pound it flat too yeah. like thin. make it nice and thin ha huh. that was mm -hmm. great i really liked that the sriracha mayo in there was tasty these pickles did you do them all in one or were the carrots and no all together separate? okay they were together mm -hmm. those pickles oh yeah that is some good stuff you can't go wrong with a pickle my kids were like oh is there red onions in there oh, i'm like oh i should have put some in because <laughs> we love those pickled red onions on everything mm, yeah no this is this is a good sandwich it's got all the flavors in there the only thing is i would have changed up the bread for sure yeah, me too I remember when I worked at a grocery store many a year ago, I did work in the bakery department for a while and all of the baguettes that we baked there were partially baked first before they were put in the oven. So they weren't even wow. like raw dough. Weird. Yeah. And so I would say we have really poor quality hmm. baguettes just from the grocery store. I think it's true. even if we would have gone to like a bakery where they actually make the dough, it probably would have been better mm -hmm. than just the one we get at the store. But yeah, something just, easier it, to bite through. One of my kids put his sandwich into the microwave for, oh. I don't know, 15 seconds or something because he couldn't bite into it. And I'm like, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's the bread. It's like, and he, <laughs> he ate it like later on. Right. And he said it was good after he warmed it up a little bit. So maybe, okay. I don't know. There you go. Mm -hmm. There was a Vietnamese bun that Sarah used when she made us the roti johns. It was like a sub bun, but a little bit different. I wonder where you have to shop for that. <laughs> yeah, I think she might've got it at the Korean store. Mm. so it's not in your everyday spot yeah it's really about the stuff inside the sandwich i mean every sandwich is mostly about what's <laughs> in the sandwich not so much about the bread <laughs> uh i disagree really i think the thing that makes the sandwich that like needs to complete the entire package is the perfect bread yeah i suppose yeah like even if you're having a burger it has to be the right bun mm, like yeah. there's certain burger buns that i'm like yeah that's not the right bun for this don't put mm. that delicious burger and all the meat and fixins on that bun <laughs> that's true you're right i think the bun is the complete it, it completes the package but a good sandwich it's been a while since i've had a good sandwich that was a good sandwich mm. Mm. i'm glad that you liked it i still will when i write it up i'm gonna i'm gonna adjust that ginger because yeah. I thought it was too heavy. The meat was too heavy on the ginger, even though I, li I liked it. It just didn't seem quite right to me for a bun me. You probably have more of experience with this. Like I said, I, I haven't really eaten these just because my cilantro aversion is mm -hmm. so strong. <laughs> and thank you so much for the wonderful tinfoil package labeled <laughs> no cilantro. <laughs> <laughs> I made yours. I made the whole thing. I loved that. that I was rolled so it great. up. I wrote no cilantro and I set it like on the opposite side of the kitchen. And then I got out the cilantro to make the rest of them for me and my kids. <laughs> mm, yeah, those flavors in there were really good. I liked it. It's a simple kind of thing. Oh, and then also the next day, mm. my husband, because my husband was working that day, the next day he had the leftover pork. There was a little bit left. Like right. probably enough for another sandwich, mm. but he had it on ramen noodles oh, and yeah. with some steamed broccoli and the noodles and the pork. And he thought it was quite delicious that way too. That does sound really good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad that you liked it. I'm going to make a soup and a sandwich for our dinner tonight. Oh, I don't think it's going to be it. as wonderful as a bun mi, but I think I'm going to do something with cook mm. some chicken, make a pulled chicken. And I finally invested in some leeks 
and it is an investment because they are $6.99 right now for a bunch of leeks. Oh my God. And I have been wow. looking at them week after week, really wanting to make a potato <laughs> leek soup. And finally this week oh, I was yum. like, okay, these look like good enough leeks. I'm doing it. I'm going all in. <laughs> <laughs> So I was inspired by your sandwich to make a soup and sandwich dinner. Now I feel like maybe we need to have that too, because the sandwich was last week. There so you go. This week can be a different sandwich. <laughs> I like me a good sandwich. Perfect weather for it. Very good idea. I like this one. This is going to go into my recipe book for sure. I think you could also put that pork in the marinade pop it in the freezer, save it for later. And then when you are like pressed for time and you're like, oh, I didn't really plan dinner, pull that out. It'll probably thaw quite quickly because it's thin mm -hmm. slices of meat. I would think you wouldn't need like a as long as a whole tenderloin. Yeah. And it's been marinating and it's delicious. And all you got to do is just grill it up real quick and you can put it in a sandwich or with rice on a rice bowl or mm. like. Absolutely. I like yeah. those types of meals too, where you can chop up all the fixins or have them all ready to go when we're all at different places and eating at different times. I can kind of put the spread out and say, when you're ready, grab this make it eat it and i yeah. know that the family has been fed or if you're going to the hockey rink as you do don't talk to me like i'm a hockey put mom, it all in Heather. your container here <laughs> put your rice <laughs> and your veggies and your meat and everything in a little it doesn't matter if it gets cold because the meat's mm. still going to be delicious right yeah excellent well thank you so much for making us sandwiches these were really good and uh, I now no longer have to be afraid of the Vietnamese sub because I can do it all by myself without that cilantro. <laughs> Thanks very much for listening, everybody. <laughs> Go make a sandwich. And now for the fine print. Join us over on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And on our website at threekitchenspodcast.com. Word of mouth is the number one way people find a new podcast. And remember, when you like, follow, subscribe, and leave a review, it helps more people find us. Thank you so much for listening. Get off my duff and make some <laughs> sriracha. The least you could do, really. Well... <laughs>